This is Money, Motivation, and Mike, and I am your host, Michael Wainwright. In charge of all the controls, as always, is audio engineer Jason Wright. And hello to you, world. This is the show that will change your life. You can contact us anytime at info at mx3.vip, and you can find all of our content at mx3, mx3.vip or on our YouTube at youtube.com slash at mx3podcast. As always, and we talk about the things that we bring to this show and what is the money, the motivation in the mic. And we talk a lot about the money part. And today we're going to talk about a little bit of the motivation and the mic, because this is something that's very special to me that I am just getting acquainted with over the last couple of months and the motivation for people to get involved and also change not only their lives, but the people that they're working with. And today I I promised you that we were going to have a very special episode, maybe turns into two from seeing how long we talk on this particular subject. But today we have a special guest named Bobby Starr. Hello, Bobby. Hello. Bobby is a volunteer um, with Kairos, and and I'm going to let him start here momentarily about what Kairos is. And we're going to go through a lot of different things uh, that that have to deal and do with the particular subject. And I think you're going to find it very, very intriguing and and very, very touching as it has been for me to, to this point as well. So, Bobby, without further ado, tell us about what Kairos is. Kairos is a layperson-led prison ministry. And layperson uh, is not clergy. Uh, it's just normal people like me and you. Um, and the goal is that we create Christian communities inside prisons that can transform lives, decrease prison violence, and re- reduce recidivism. Okay. All right. Well, just going right there to recidiv- recidivism. Recidivism. Um, what t- tell us what that is and what the rate? I, I believe it's a rate. It is a rate. Uh, recidivism is the tendency of a convicted criminal to reoffend. Okay. So once they're released, what are the chances that they're going to cause or or do something that will cause them to be commit another crime? To commit another crime. Okay. Um, right now across the country. Uh, the number is between 47 and 50%. So out of 10, 10 people that are released from prison, half of them will go back. So five out of 10, five out of 10 nationwide, nationwide will commit a crime, go to prison, and go back out and commit another crime. Right. That's a, that's a strong number. Now, obviously, the program that you are a part of and volunteering with helps with reduce that rate. And where does that go? If the, the Kairos weekend consists of three and a half days, um, if, a, if an inmate goes through the three and a half day program, the number drops from about 50% to just under 30%. Okay. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about those numbers right off the bat is lots of times on shows like ours and a listening audience, and they listen to what the subject matter is going to be. And they will determine in the first 30 to 45 seconds if this is a topic that they're interested in. Well, when you find out that your criminal system is putting people back on the street at 50% to commit another rate, that's going to get the listening and viewing audience to pay attention. And your program with Kairos obviously has a whole lot to do with that. Now, Kairos is not just in Texas or Oklahoma or any particular state. It's all over. Is that correct? Yes, it's international. Um, Kairos is in uh, over 500 prisons and communities in 10 different countries. 10 different countries, Jason. Now, what are, we have half a dozen countries that listen to us on a, on a regular basis. Uh, so a person can get involved in your program virtually anywhere in the world. Correct. Okay. So right here, and we're going to touch on this a couple of times. How can they get in touch with whatever it is, the international, the the Texas, you, where would they go? International uh, can be found at kairosprisonministry.org. There's kairostexas.org for people here local in Texas. And then in North Texas, the, the group that I'm personally involved with, it can be found at cofieldkairos.org. And that's your North Texas branch, correct? Yes. And Jason, all these, you'll put all these addresses on our website, correct? So that anyone who has of interest in not only getting involved, but just knowing more yes. about what's going on, they can contact you and, and, and go to your websites, et cetera, et cetera. And, and we can handle that 
uh, from there. So how long have you been in the ministry? I've been doing Kairos for between seven and eight years. Seven and eight years. And I believe when we were off the air, you told me that it took some hard arm pulling to get you to go and be involved. (laughs) To say the least. Um, A gentleman at my church um, approached me with it, and I thought to myself, like I'm sure a lot of people probably do, I don't have anything in common with guys in prison. Sure. I've, I've never spent a minute in jail that I wasn't on a field trip. Amen. So for two years, I put him off, and uh, he finally got to me. And, and I had a, a, a break in my time schedule at work that would allow it. And I, I thought, okay, well, I'll do it once, and maybe he'll leave me alone after that. And that's where they get you. So he knew all he needed was one time. All it takes is once. Okay. So as I understand, the, the three-plus-day the three plus day program happens twice a year in a prison. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Where you guys basically go there, you, do you live in the prison, or, or do you leave at night and go to a hotel? We, we leave and go to a hotel at night. Um, our, our unit is Cofield, is in Palestine, Texas. Okay. Um, we have a base camp church. They, they loan us their facility over the three and a half days um, there in Palestine. So we set up their kitchen um, because we prepare food and take all of that stuff in. And that's where we come back to in the evening after we release the the participants, the the brothers in white, as we we call them. Uh, We go back to the church and we sort of debrief. Um, There is an element of, uh, we promise them that we won't share anything that they don't authorize us to share. Okay. Um, they'll have a prayer partner on the outside team, the support team, but we can't share anything with those guys if the participants don't okay it. Okay. If they do, we can ask for prayer for a specific thing. Um, but we debrief at the church and then we go back and we stay in a hotel at night and then early the next morning we go back. Okay. Now you just, you had said that you basically, other than being a male, and you, I guess you're dealing with straight males. There, yes, are, there yes, are not. It a, yeah, it's a male prison. Okay, is there fe- is there a female Kairos as well? There is a female Kairos. Um, there's actually three different versions. You have Kairos inside uh, that deals with the men who are incarcerated. Um, there's Kairos outside for female family members who are impacted by a male family member who is incarcerated. Okay. Uh, they can go through a very similar program that their family member went through, but they go through on the outside. Okay. Most of those are done at churches or church camps. Um, and we recommend to the participants on a three and a half day weekend. If you if your mom or your wife or girlfriend or sister, if you feel like they could get something out of this, and they always can, mm-hmm. they're invited to invite that family member to contact us. And we put them together with a Kairos outside uh, facilitator, and they put it all together, and they get to go through a, a similar program. And then there's Kairos Torch, which um, involves youth, incarcerated youth, 25 and younger. Okay. You said that you didn't, like when you went to the prison, the inmates, you really obviously don't have anything in common with them other than you are both males. Yeah. So... What type of inmate are we talking about? I'm assuming this is not petty theft no. inmates. Uh, Cofield is a maximum security facility. Uh, there's not anybody there because they, they stole a lawnmower. Okay. Um, we specifically, Thursday is whenever our weekend starts. Uh, we go in on Thursday morning and set up the, the chapel area for the program. Thursday afternoon about 2 o'clock is whenever we get to the unit with the full team. And we set up and do uh, introductions. So we tell them who we are, kind of where we live, what we do for a living, that kind of thing. They share who they are, uh, where they lived whenever they were at home. Uh, you know, what did they do for a living, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But we specifically don't ask them why they're there. Okay. I don't need to know why you're in prison. Okay. That has nothing to do with why I'm here. Got you. So what? whatever their crime in life has been is not of interest and is not discussed. No. Now, if they bring it up, then they bring it up, I guess. Um, 
if they bring it up, because, you know, guys overshare sometimes. Uh, if they bring it up, you you listen to a mo- you know, for a moment, but you really want to redirect. Okay. Because we're human. I'm human. Yes, sir. If if this guy admits to me why he's in prison and it's something that, that touches me, then it gets between me and what I'm there for. I got you. Um, yep. Human nature takes over. It, it, it will affect you. Sure. So I, I basically brained up that information if they give it, you know, if they share too much. Um, and then you try to get focused back on the yeah, get task back, at hand, get back on the task at hand. Yes. Okay. So you go in on a Thursday, you're setting up the, uh, the chapel, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And then uh, is it, is it all in one big form or do you break into groups or, um, the, we actually are currently working in the chapel of the prison and we split that room into three sections, one area where we eat, one area where we do, um, our talks and our family time. And then on the other end, we do the, our actual chapel area. Um, the family area is split up into seven family groups, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, Oh, neat. And whichever family they're a member of on their three and a half day weekend, that's that's who they are always. Okay. So is the Thursday the half day? Thursday is a half day. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, full days? Yes. Okay. So you just repeat the daily r- regiment every day? Every that- day. Uh, the whole three and a half day weekend is one long talk. Okay. But it's split into 12 different sections. Okay. Um, There's a title for each part. We have a different speaker. Uh, Some of the talks are specifically given by lay people or non-clergy. And that's just a little more of a bond between us and the brothers in white. Um, They don't feel like they're being preached to. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're just involved in a conversation. So how many volunteers will be there on a normal weekend? Uh, The average inside team is about 35. Okay. So it would take... Quite a few bodies to talk for three and a half days. Oh, yeah. For the uh, the seven family tables, uh, there are three team members, uh, a table leader, an assistant table leader, and a clergy at each table. And then there's six brothers in white at each table. Mm-hmm. And it's part of the program is, is if you get up from, the, from your family table and you go up and give a 20-minute talk, when you're done, you disappear for a a few minutes and let them discuss the talk that way they can't cheer for you uh, they're not clapping for you because you don't have anything to do with what's going on gotcha it's about the information and they talk about how it either made them feel or how they how it made them feel or what it said to them yes. specifically I got it. they get to dissect it right then and there yeah Bef- and one thing that we don't uh we don't share with them on the weekend is the fact that those seven tables, there's 42 brothers in white. Okay. There's six at each table and we split them because unfortunately, even more than the regular world prison is divided by race. So at each family table, there are two white guys, two black guys and two Hispanic guys. Every table, every table. It's, it's split up that way on purpose, and none of them sit next to each other. So are y'all in charge of splitting them up, putting them into the, groups? The weekend leader is the one who sets the tables the way that they're, the way they're put together. Okay. But from, I think from what I just heard you talk about, what you just said is if these 42 men were to walk into that room by themselves, mm-hmm. there's going to be six white guys over here. Six black guys over here, six Native Americans, whatever. Yeah, they they will they will inadvertently they will split up by race. Okay, just like that. And by splitting them up, you see a lot of interaction and oh yeah, and things of that nature. Oh, yeah. We've had um, rival gang leaders sitting next to each other Ooh. that would never, in most cases, would not even be in the same room together. Right. They're different cell blocks. The and over the a weekend, deal. they share information with each other that 
you might not share with your brother. Mm-hmm. Or they, we do poster time where they get to draw a, a visual depiction of what they got out of the talk. Okay. And they're sharing Crayola markers. I catch you. Know? you. And it, it, we forced them to participate with one another in a way that it just creates maybe not a bond, but it softens the edges of relationships that would normally be really problematic. Okay. All right. You, you stated one, one of the sections was the eating, which we, most of us refer to as the mess hall. Yes. So for the listening audience and the viewing audience is the food as bad as what we might perceive. The food in their mess hall is every bit of what you can imagine that it would be. Okay. It's I've eaten in there a couple of times and it's, I, I joke with the brothers in white. I, the food alone is enough to make me not want to come to prison. I got you. That will that, right before you commit the crime, you think about the yeah, food. No, I'm yes. not going in there. But <laughs> over the three and a half day weekend, we bring in our specific unit. Now there are units in Kairos that don't allow the food to be brought in. Um, a lot of the posters and things like that, they, they're not allowed to bring in. But Cofield, our agreement with them, and their trust in what we do, um, they allow us to bring in outside food. Everything from grapes and oranges and, and bananas and stuff for breakfast, uh, coffee, tea, lemonade, through the three and a half day weekend, uh, we grill hamburgers on the outside, bring those in. There's lasagna, taco salad. Okay, so that with with the food coming into play here and that conversation, tell us about the Kairos cookies. Kairos cookies. Uh, People laugh whenever I tell them. You can you can Google Kairos cookies. It's an actual thing. Um, we carry in on a three and a half day weekend between twenty five and thirty thousand homemade cookies. Just to your location. Just to our location on a three and a half day weekend. Everybody from the guard at the front gate to the tower guard outside the fence to the brothers in white that we're ministering to. Uh, the guards that wander through the the chapel while we're in there because it is a prison and we have to have security. Mm -hmm. That's part of their side of the agreement. And uh, the most important part of the cookies, and I shared with you about the cookies earlier, but I didn't tell you, on Saturday evening, they get a special dozen cookies. Okay. In the evening, every evening, they get a, a brown paper sack with a dozen cookies in it that they can take back to their cell or their, their area, wherever it is that they live. Um, on Saturday evening, they get their dozen cookies, and then there's a, a white paper sack with a dozen cookies in it that they also receive. Those are considered in what we call forgiveness cookies. Okay. So if that brother in white has ill feelings or has a bad, um, has had a bad run in with someone else in the facility. Bad experience. Bad experience. He can take the forgiveness cookies to that guy and share them with him and ask him for forgiveness. Okay. And there you can Google uh, cookies save lives. There's a YouTube video of a guy who explains a situation with forgiveness cookies where a dozen cookies saved lives. Gotcha. Very, very interesting. And, now, and I always ask them on Sunday whenever we come back, what did you do with your cookies? Now, obviously that part of the program works or y'all wouldn't be doing it. Absolutely. Can you imagine a block in Main Street, USA, and that neighborhood taking cookies and handing them to their neighbors that they haven't talked to in 15 years? Right. Because you mowed one strip of grass onto my grass and, and, and messed up my whole yard. That that's how goofy we are in this world, right? And these guys that want to kill each other can can receive a cookie and 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 make amends and be forgiven. Yep. That that's what it sounds like to me. Our conversation here and our interview is going to go more than just one episode, so we're going to pick up uh, on our next episode because uh, there's just a whole lot of information that we want to continue to to cover on this uh, great subject of volunteering and bringing ministry to the prison systems. 
Money Motivation and Mike is always looking for information such as this, and we definitely thank Bobby Starr coming and spending time with us today. Uh, once again, contact us at info at mx3.vip, and you can find all our content at mx3.vip or on our YouTube at youtube.com slash at mx3 podcast. And don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and hit the icon bell to get notified of all of our future content. So until next time, continue to live your life the right way.